least let me say the obvious thing. Everyone in the world of the pandemic right now is losing their minds. We have no idea what to do. We have no idea what the future holds. We have no idea what it ends. I thought I'd turn the camera today for a few minutes and talk to you about, you know, mentally and psychologically, how you're going to make it through this pandemic. So stay tuned. Let's get started on this. Hi, my friends, it's Patrick Allen from Stop Doing Nothing. And, you know, we've kind of had this little pandemic thing going on for a while. And I thought I would turn on the camera and talk a little bit about what's going on in my head, my thoughts, how I'm surviving, how my family's surviving. And, and as always, I would love your comments below, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or wherever you watch this. I would love to hear your feedback on this because, of course, these are just my opinions about how I am coping through this pandemic. It is, what, uh, January of 2022 now. It's been going on for a while. It's not going to go anyway anytime soon. And, you know, I would have to, I would be lying if I said, you know, everything is hunky-dory and I'm coping just fine. No, my, my head screwed up like everybody else's. I would love to be not in front of the camera right now and out traveling to Chicago or to New York or to Hawaii or to Mexico or to Cancun. There are places I would love to go and there are things I would love to be doing. I would love to be hanging out with my friends, but you know what? That's just not realistic. So let's talk a little bit about how we're going to cope and how we're going to get through this. The first thing that I want you to remember and this is probably the basis for a lot of things I talk about is that a lot of this is going to be attitude and mindset. There aren't a lot of things I can give you that you're going to physically be able to do. I can't tell you to walk to the store and buy this or walk down the street and do this to fix a problem. A lot of this is going to come up, you know, what happens in between your two ears up here. So, you know, as, as with all things, the solutions to a lot of our problems are how we approach them, how we think about them. And our attitude when we when the alarm goes off in the morning and when we put our feet on the ground. And the first thing in, in my notes that I wrote down here for you is the attitude and kind of remembering that the pandemic is not going to end. We, we love to think that when we have major problems in our life that there's a definitive start point and there's a definitive end point. And that's not how you know, large sicknesses or pandemics like this work. We knew that it was kind of, you know, when the pandemic started, if you remember correctly, it kind of affected a couple of people and then a lot more people and then a thousand people and then a hundred thousand people. And then when people started passing away, that's the way it worked also. There wasn't like it hit us this one day and it stopped this next day. And so on the flip side, on the back end, when it comes to the pandemic ending, I think it's kind of funny whenever I hear that. People are like, what date is the pandemic going to end? Or when's the president or the prime minister saying the pandemic's going to end? Okay, there's not an end date. It's what's going to happen is as we get more vaccinated, as people take responsibility, as we learn more about it, the and we're seeing this already, the impact on our lives of the pandemic is less and less and less. People are dying less and less. The more people that get vaccinated, the more people that kind of keep their distance or, you know, a social space around each other, that stuff is helping us. It's not fun. It's it's annoying. That's a pain. Honestly, it's a pain in the ass. I don't know if I could curse on my own podcast, but yes, I can. It's a pain in the ass when it comes to thinking about how to run our lives, staying home all the time, staying locked up all the time, not being able to go to a park or to a birthday party or to a Christmas party or to, you know, town, Times Square in, in downtown New York, all those social things that we've gotten used to, we've gotten spoiled with, we just can't do. But those things that we're not doing are actually helping our fellow man. And of course, we're going to have differing opinions on this. Not everybody's going to agree with me on this, but all the things we're going to do to kind of separate ourselves from each other, we know is helping and we know is making the world a better place. So if you're thinking like the pandemic's going to end, or if you ever believe that like a leader or a doctor told you the pandemic was going to end at a certain date and time, then I hate to disappoint you, but that's not going to happen. However, what's going to happen is if we do the things that the doctors say and we take care of ourselves, we're noticing that it's going to have less and less of an impact on our lives. This is, and this has happened with anything major in your life over time. If you think about it, what well, initially when you thought something was going to be a disaster, well, you know what? After you, after you paid attention to it for a while and it got to be part of your life a little bit, then you realize, you know, it's not that big of a deal. 
We still live in a pretty damn good world and we still have a lot of conveniences out there. So the fact that I have to wear a mask, I mean, goodness gracious, is that really that big of a deal? Nah, I don't think so. So let's just get used to the fact and have the attitude, you know what, this, this crap's here to stay and how can I make the best of it? Now, again, here's some of my tips that I wrote down for you as to how I'm making it through the pandemic. First of all, you know, I've kind of come up with some ways to make my life a little bit more flexible. And I'm not sitting around waiting for things. So I know a lot of friends are sitting around waiting, 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 waiting. When's it going to end? I, I can't do this. I can't do this. I am not of the attitude that I am going to sit around and wait for things to happen. I'm not going to wait for someone to declare it over. I'm still going to coffee shops. I'm still doing my volunteer time at a school. I'm still going to restaurants and dining out. I may not be doing it as much. And I'm very careful when I do it, and I don't do it as frequently as I used to, but I'm not sitting around hiding out in my house all of the time waiting for things to happen. I just, you know, switched gyms. My previous gym was awesome. My new gym is awesome. And you know what? I don't wear a mask in the gym. You know what? I might catch COVID. At this point in time, I'm not, to tell you truth, terribly afraid of COVID anymore. It's getting, like I said in my previous statement, it's getting more minor and more minor and more minor. But I would say as much as possible, try to continue on in your normal routines. Initially, when the pandemic first broke out, that wasn't encouraged. I am personally encouraging you now to try to see what habits you can get back into to get a level of normalcy in your life. Go to coffee shops, but you know what you do? Go sit over, walk in with a mask on, get your order, get your coffee and your Danish and sit over in the corner or sit by the fireplace. And usually and most people in coffee shops are antisocial anyways, so they want to space out anyway. So that should not be a problem. Go back to all those things that you love to do, going to the park, going on a run, going on all those things and try to get them back in your life as soon as possible. For just about every single thing that we've had to give up, there is a way to do it continue doing it and doing it safely. You know, I still like large, you know, long outdoor hikes. There's nothing wrong with a long outdoor hike. Outdoor activities are awesome right now. In Oklahoma City, it's 18 degrees, so I'm not doing too much outside right now. But when the weather is good, I am outside as much as possible. So try to keep back, slowly ease back into your normal outdoor habits or your normal social habits. They will get safer over time. Realize that you still might get COVID. I heard someone saying, I 100% agree with this. I am not a doctor. I am not giving you medical advice. However, we are. I believe that we are all going to get COVID, just like we are all going to get the flu at some point in time. It's a matter of how severe it is, how you take care of yourself before you get it, and how you take care of yourself after you get it. But I'm 100%, I might've had it already, I don't know. I give myself several home tests, never seen it pop up but I fully believe I'm going to get it. However, I'm hoping that by the time I get it, whatever strain that I get, it won't have as much of an impact on me as you know uh, one of the earlier strains would do. Okay, what else can we do? For those of you who follow me and you're kind of into entrepreneurship or financial management, I'm going to tell you, and I, you know, I've, I've probably said this in a hundred different podcasts, a hundred different ways, there is not a better time to start up something like a side hustle or consider even consider possibly a career change. Let's go with the career change first. Oftentimes we work for companies where we have uh, jobs or positions that require us to physically be at the company. And other times we have positions, oftentimes like my positions, where I can, I'm, a, I'm more of a thought, a thinker, a thought leader, someone who makes money off of his brain. And because of that, I can work any place, any time. I can work two o'clock in the morning in Alaska. I work and work 7 p.m. at Catalina Island off of California. I can work just about any place, any time. If you're someone who's thought about, you know, kind of switching careers in your company or doing something like that, this would be a good time to do it. Find a position in your company, assuming that you work for somebody else, find a position in your company where you can take more advantage of uh, being remote and using your brain to make money. Talk to your boss. And here's a, here's a kind of a good one, uh, one I'm a fan of, is see if your job, you know, related to, you know, being a thought leader or using your brain, seeing if that's really something that requires you to work 40 hours a week, eight to five. Oftentimes, a lot of us who interact with clients, uh, yeah, we kind of have to be on the clock then because that's when our clients are on the clock. But I am, our world it's been this way the entire time I've been in business. Uh, that's for two plus decades. 
Our world is a 24-7 world. So would your boss let you work like a Sunday through a Thursday from home or a Tuesday through a Saturday or maybe, you know, Monday, Tuesday, take off Wednesday? If you listen to any of my other podcasts or YouTube shows, you'll notice that I'm a big fan of the fact that there are seven days in the week and you can work whenever you want to on those days. So, you know, just consider what kind of flexibility can you get in your company? What kind of flexibility can you get in your job? And as an extension of that, is this a good time for you to start a business or become an entrepreneur or start a side hustle? You're probably working from home and you've got a lot more time when it comes to like like free time. Like, you know, you don't have to get up in the morning and like rush to the office and spending an hour or two in the car and rushing home. So you've got some more time and some more flexibility. And if you're someone who's been working from home from the pandemic for a while and you're kind of, you know, either getting bored with your job or you're thinking you might want to do something different, now is the perfect time to start a side hustle. And I know I've said that before, but you know what? You're working from home. Why not take advantage of all that time you're gaining from not commuting to start up a side hustle, to start up a side business of some sort? It's easy. And, you know, there's courses I can give you. I'm going to have a course eventually on how easy it is to, you know, start a business but the hardest part of starting a business is word of mouth. The, the, the legal parts of starting a business, you know, creating an S corporation, creating a C corp or an LLC, that's easy. Getting a tax ID number, that's easy. You know, driving down to your local bank and getting a business bank account, that stuff is easy. The hardest part of building and running any business is the marketing and making sure people know you exist. And say it's truth, even these days, that's getting pretty easy. So now is a great, great time to start some kind of side hustle or possibly do a career change for your business. Let's see, what else can we talk about? We've talked about making your life more flexible. You know what? Another good way to get through the pandemic is kind of spend some more time with your family. And if you're someone who already does this, then kudos to you. But a lot of us, especially, you know what, and I'm guilty of this also, I don't necessarily spend time with everyone that I should, friends and family. You know what, if I have friends and family that kind of have my same pandemic beliefs, I'm okay with going over to their house and hanging out with them and playing board games and playing cars and doing those kind of things. It's made some of my relationships better, I have to admit. But, you know, as long as they're healthy and I'm healthy, that's okay. There's nothing in this world that says we still can't go see friends and still can't hang out with our friends. I've been doing it plenty. You know, I've gone to bachelorette parties. I've gone to, you know, travel down to Dallas from Oklahoma City to speak at speaking engagements. Yeah, I've done two large speaking engagements, definitely, since the pandemic started in very large groups of people. And you know what? I walked away with not being sick. I'm not worried about getting sick. I realize it's going to happen, but I'm not going to let that fear stop me. So hopefully these have been some useful tips when it comes to you kind of making your way through the pandemic. And I am open to any kind of commentary you have, no matter what your belief is, no matter what you know, you're pro-vax or you're anti-vax or whatever your political belief is, I would love to hear from you on social media. So make sure you follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and that's kind of up to you. Oh, definitely over on Instagram. And as always, make sure you subscribe. And if you're watching on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe and then hit that little bell down at the bottom to make sure you get notified when our new show comes out. And as always, subscribe to the podcast. That way I can be all up in your iPhone whenever you want. And did you even know you can ask Alexa to listen to this particular podcast? It's pretty darn cool. I might have even triggered mine right there. As always, thank you. Thank you for watching. You know what? Let me know if I can do anything to help you kind of mentally and psychologically get through this pandemic because it is not easy and it is not fun right now. But you know what? If we approach it the right way with the right attitude and the right mentality, we are going to make it just fine. I feel great today. Even if I was a little bit sick, I'd probably still mentally feel pretty great. I'm probably going to go out to a coffee shop later, hang out with some friends. Not as much as I you know, want to like I normally said I would, but I'm not going to let it completely slow down or stop my life. I don't fear it. I don't fear my government. I don't fear my neighbor. And I sure as heck do not fear a pandemic. So whew, a lot to say there. But you know what? I'm a happy camper. I want you to be a happy camper always. Also, so as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Subscribe, like, follow, you know, do all the cool stuff you're going to do. And until the next episode, I love you and I will talk to you soon. Take care. 